Okay, in this video, I would like to look at how to sequence a design, or at least my ideas on sequencing a design, choosing the right uh, stitch type and the tools. Now, I've already resized the logo and locked it into, into place. So, my uh, opinion here is that to stitch is to stitch the yellow label first, the lighter color first, because there will be an overlap with the red. And if the lighter color is under the darker red color, you're less likely to see through it. So I'll just roll the mouse in. I'll select the complex fill tool. And in my fills tab, select tatami. And I'm, I'm happy with all of the properties here of the tatami stitch. And I'll select the yellow uh, chip from the color palette at the bottom. Now I'll start well out into the black area to allow for an overlap when the satin stitch comes down and into the red area by a millimeter or two to provide an overlap when we eventually when I eventually digitize the red so all the sides of these this label are right clicks and the corners or the change of direction are left clicks so there's a left click here I'll do another right click halfway through the black enter once which will close the object now in our prompt bar at the bottom it's asking me to enter point one on boundary two which would be a hole uh, there's no need to do that now so i'll hit enter once again and then it's looking for en enter angle point one and angle point two so there's the stitch direction and that object has been completed so i'll continue on with the same as tool so simply change the color and and i'm going to do the bottom of the uh, bottle first so it's a left click to begin a right a left that's a good idea when you're digitizing these to digitize with as few input nodes as you can get away with it's easy to come back and add them later if you've miscalculated so right a left again and a right and a left now I'm not going to push right up into the corner here as you can see there's already yellow stitches there there'll be black coming down later and by forcing stitches into very tight areas, you're just risking um, a thread break. So I'll leave that area for the time being. And if I have miscalculated, I can come back and edit the shape later. So right click, right click. And I'll just hit, a, hit enter again to left click and enter, enter. Now you notice I didn't put in my stitch direction and by hitting the three enters, it's closed the object number one, uh, avoided putting a hole in it with the second enter, and the third enter just puts a default stitch angle in. So shift, or at least roll the mouse back, and continue on with the tool, and I'll do the uh, the glass of wine. So these are right clicks again, right, 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 and a left click here, and a right, right, right right enter 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 continue on to the top of the bottle now I'm doing these in three different uh, objects so that I can change the stitch angle of the wine to give the design a little bit of character so there's a couple of right clicks across the top there a left click here a right click a left click back down on the edge of the black border of the label these are right clicks a left click straight back down to a left click and enter 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 now if i select the bottom uh, or the top piece as it defaulted to it the stitch angle there is 153 degrees and the bottom is also 153 degrees so let's change the angle of the wine now we can change it numerically over here in the specials tab or with the reshaping tool that'll display the stitch angle tool and i can just drag that around to change the stitch angle to uh, 34 degrees in this case. Turn my true view back on and already you can see a little bit of differentiation between the um, the bottle and the glass. The other thing I would do at this stage is test for thread trims. So I'll left click on the travel toolbar, on the icon at the top of the travel toolbar which will take me to the start of the design and then right click on the scissors which will take me through the design by thread trim so we've finished the yellow object and we've got a thread trim at the top of the uh, glass of wine the, the way to fix that is to reshape the object so that they, they're closer together or select the object and go to the connectors tab and change the settings so that 
after the object's finished, don't trim unless you go to uh, unless you're travelling more than four millimeters, and that's immediately you've gotten rid of that th thread trim. Now, if I'm not going to trim to four millimeters, there's probably little purpose in tying off, so I'll change the tie off to four millimeters as well. Particularly in view of the fact that this area is going to be covered by the black satin stitch uh, a little later on. So zero to fill the area the the uh, work area with the design. I'll left click on the tulips again and right click on the scissors and we've gone through all of the colors with no unnecessary thread trims. Now for the for the border around the label I'll, I've decided to do that first because if there's any movement but in the design we want to finish this area of the design off first so that if there is any movement at least the yellow the black and the defining border will move at the same time. It's, it's not likely, but uh, that's how my thinking is at this stage. So I'll select the a back stitch tool, I'll select the black color, and I'll zoom in. Now I'm going to start at the bottom of the, the label. It's a little confusing here because I've got stitches showing, I've got an image showing, so I'll turn the stitches off with the shortcut key S. Sorry, I hit D then to turn the drawing off. I'll hit S now, and you can see that the edge of the objects are visible. So I've selected the color. I'll just click around that edge of the red, which is the defining color. So these are right clicks, right click, a left click, a left click, and we're sort of going to no man's land. Remember that the, the red objects have been broken into three pieces, so I could stop there and digitize a running stitch to save a few stitches, but um, it's pr probably, in fact, I'll do that. So hit enter to stop. Now I'll select my running stitch tool again and just continue up to that point and stop. Can select again and continue on. Now you may have noticed that I didn't change to a back stitch, that's no problem. We're actually digitizing a vector line and I can change the properties of that vector line after it's been completed. Uh, it's easy enough to do. Just select the object, as you can see it's turned pink and it's got the blue box around it in the color object list. And it's simply a matter of now uh, well, the easiest way probably is to go into my outlines and choose backstitch. I can just can see it's changed to a backstitch there. Now I'll turn the stitches back on. Turn the true view on to see what we've got. So we've got the, the backstitch which provides the border, the running stitch which is going to be covered when the satin comes down, and the rest of the backstitch border there. A shortcut letter D to turn the drawing back on and let's plan the next part of the design so i think if we run to the top here do the little cross bit for the bottom of the um the screw part of the bottle and down the side across the bottom and then i want want to make the glass look like it's sitting on top of the bottle so i'll do a run stitch here the side of the bottle then complete the bottom of the glass so let's come back and and work through that Select the running stitch tool, the black thread, and left click right, right, right. These are all curved clicks until I get to this point here because that's the beginning of the straight. I can go all the way to the intersection of that little cross piece there and hit enter. Now here's a little trick. It, it's a little difficult to see uh, digitizing on that black. So in the view toolbar, and my view toolbar is this fellow here. See the starfish? That will dim the artwork a little so it's much easier to see. So now I'll select the input A tool. <clears throat> and under my fills, it's defaulted to satin stitch. And I'll leave the auto spacing at, at 90%. So left click, left click. Two right clicks and a left click and a left click to complete. I'll just hit the H key to reshape. I miss... Um, place that node that probably should have been back here a little bit so I'll just left click and put another one on had I placed that correctly I would have got away with the six um, clicks of the mouse then 
but there you go. So now there's no need to travel to the top here. This the software with its closest join feature will automatically generate a running stitch to the top when I begin digitizing the side of the bottle. So it's a left click and a left click to begin with. I come straight down and I'll do a right click here and a left click. Then two left clicks because it's a straight pull right down to this point here. Two left clicks. You can see that I've advanced this one a little bit uh, further past the horizontal as compared with that because this side's got a little further to travel. And as we start to curve the other way, I'll advance on the other side. Okay, so there's a right click going around the curve. And as the curve becomes more regular, I can uh, make fewer mouse clicks. So I think I can almost go to the bottom of the bottle and click and click. And yeah, look, it's followed quite nicely along that shape. So again, the software is going to automatically create the travel run from the end point of this object to the beginning of this one. So no need to digitize. There is no need to digitize a running stitch in there. These are right clicks again. I'll left click there, a right click, and just finish that off. Instead of butting and finishing here, I've sort of merged, tried to merge these stitches as we're coming around the corner there. And you'll see as the, uh, as the bottom of the glass comes around a little later on, these stitches will merge rather than pull apart. I'll just go to my reshaping tool and probably pull this one back and down a little bit to make that curve a little bit uh, longer. The merging of the stitches a bit longer. Now, select the running stitch tool and left click and left click. That's just as a travel run to get from one place to another. It will be covered by satin stitch later. And as I've been uh, toggling between the running stitch and the input A, instead of having to come back and find the tool again, simply hitting the space bar will toggle me back to the uh, column A tool and I'll right click right click and a couple of clicks to finish that object now I can come back down and do the bottom of the glass now just to make you aware of what the closest join feature in the software does that's where this object finished watch what happens when we complete the, the next object so select the tool again and a couple of left inputs to begin with and the rest of these clicks around the bottom of the glass will be right clicks. And back to the reshaping tool just to fix up the edge there, drag that point in. So I've just right clicked on the edge of the vector line or on the vector line, which is the edge of the object, which has created a couple more nodes. And you can see we're just doing a little bit of fine tuning of the shape. OK, now I'll select the side of the bottle again and go to my reshaping tool and you can see the endpoint which was up here has moved down here to be near the closest near the starting point of the bottom of the glass so that's the power of that closest join feature i'll turn the true view on and you can see what i was getting at there i want the glass to appear as if it's sitting on top of the bottle and we've achieved that by stitching the bottom of the bottle then the running stitch the side of the bottle and then coming back and doing the bottom of the glass. So I'll continue on up the stem of the glass. And I'm holding the control key down to keep that column nice and vertical. And release. Now tab to come back to the uh, spacebar at least to come back to the running stitch tool. And there are a couple of ways to achieve this, but um, I could have done part of the glass and then come back and, and 
part of the glass, had done the bottle, and then come back and finish the glass off. But I think it's probably easier to understand, particularly when you're learning, if we run to the top of the bottle. Digitize the cap. And I've just hit the reshape tool just to do a bit of refining. Look, in real life, I probably wouldn't bother. I'm moving it a very small amount, and I think it would stitch out and the shape would be just fine. But I'm just demonstrating that you can come back and add nodes at a later time if you wish. So left click. I've got four left clicks there and left click a left click and right clicks to come around the curve you can see the nice overlap i've got there so these red stitches are going to be pulling back but we've got enough overlap there that they won't pull out from underneath the border enter Again, there's no need to put a travel run in, but I would, would like to start the glass at this point here so that when this satin stitch comes around past, it will cover that, that end stitch, uh, uh, cover it over. So we're covering that travel run that we stitched in there before with the satin with the, that we're creating at the moment. Notice the, the curve here, the, the line's way off, but as we, you need three points to make the curve. As I click that, it'll pull that line in. Okay, now I'll digitize a little bit short here because I know that that column is going to continue on and push out. And I do want a, a gap uh, between the end of this and the, the side of that column. So zero to fill the work area. Uh, left click on what I call the tulips to take me to the beginning of the design. Right click on the scissors so it's done the yellow, all of the red. Uh, we've got a thread trim there at the bottom piece of the black there. I'll continue on and we've done the rest. Now we've got another one. We've got another thread trim up here. So they can only be um, connector issues. Let's just double check. I'll come down to this point here and go to the H tool. Now what's happened here? The starting and the start and the finish point have been reversed here. I'll just drag the start point of this back stitch to here which will force the end stitch to the other end of that line. Do a test again. Okay, so we've got to this point here, and that would be that end point, and the beginning of the next object is too far away, for, so the, the, the connectors have determined that there should be a thread trim here. So if, if we want to accept the thread trim, that's fine. Um, I think that distance is uh, small enough that it should be able to jump across there without uh, any issue, and it will avoid that eight, second waste, eight seconds of wasted time created by the thread trim. So I've just bought that, the end point of that line, that this connecting line, a little bit closer by going to the reshape tool and selecting the end point and moving it up. Let's see if that's fixed the issue. <clears throat> and it has. So zero. So it's gone through all of that black without a thread trim, which is fine. We'll come back and I know that we've got to do the center of the label. So D to turn the drawing back on. 
select my input A or column A tool. It should have defaulted to satin stitch. Right click, right click, right click, right click. Now there's a number of ways to do this. I'll put two op two left clicks at the end of that object. I could stop there and then create another one, but there's no real need to. I could come straight back down to the bottom of that black line with a left click and another one on the other side. Hit the enter key. Go to my reshaping tool. Click on that point and drag that line across. Now I'll turn the drawing off again and you'll see that I've got a nice mitered uh, effect on that corner, which I think will stitch out quite nicely. Turn the drawing back on and select the tool once again. A couple of left clicks to begin with, a right, a right. This is a nice uh, obtuse angle here, so a couple of left clicks at the corner and two left clicks at the top of the object to finish it off. Turn my true view on. Everything's looking nice for me, to me there. So turn the true view off again, travel to the beginning of the design and just double check for those trims. Right click, that's good. It's done all the red without a thread trim, that's fantastic. Uh, the black has been done with a thread trim at the end to jump across to do the final piece of the label. So I hope that helps. My idea was to, to stitch the yellow first so that when we put the darker red over the top of it, if you could see through the red, the, the yellow is not going to show up. The, the darker colour will cover it. And we wanted to reduce the thread trims. Now I haven't looked at underlays or anything in this design, so we may cover that in a, in a different video, a different article. I hope that's helped. Thanks for watching.